Hi Divers, Alec Pierce Scuba, Venti Scuba, back once again with some stories and some information and equipment and training methods from the old days, the Stone Age, <laughs> Kevin calls it. I love that actually, <laughs> the Stone Age, yeah, anyway. Okay, so today we're going to talk about air consumption. Air consumption is a big deal today, it really is. In your training, you learn about using the SPG or if you're a, a modern diver, you probably have an air integrated computer. And the air integrated computer today is fantastic. I'm going to spend just a second talking about that as we finish up today. Why I think that a modern diver, if he's able to, because they're not cheap, should have an air integrated computer. But anyway, let's talk about the old days, air consumption. Well, number one, if we go back far enough, I started diving in 58, scuba diving in 58. If we go back far enough, in the late 50s, early 60s, air consumption was an interesting subject. Because we had no idea how much air we used. In order to let me work with me on this, in order to calculate your air consumption, you have to know how much air you're using. You follow that? Do I have to draw a picture here? And we didn't know how much air we were using. There was no pressure gauge, no submersible pressure gauge. We had dry gauges on land. There were gauges that we swiped from other industries, uh, whatever they happened to be, and we get, we we we'd put a, a pressure gauge onto a yoke. I think I've shown you some of those in some of my uh, my videos. And we could put it onto a tank before the dive. And psh, psh, up, tank is full. 2250. That's what the tanks were in those days. 1800 PSI or 2250 PSI. Some of them were 2475, but 2250 was a stamp pressure. But the tank's full. 2250. Psh, turn it off and put the reg on and we go diving. Okay? And we come up after the dive, come back to the surface after the dive, we take our regulator off, put the pressure gauge back on, turn it on, 600 PSI. Yep, good dive, I made it. That was our concept of air consumption. We went from 22 to 600, and we came back to the surface with still air in our tanks. We knew we still had air in our tanks because we were still breathing. <laughs> air consumption in the Stone Age. It was just that simple. There was nothing more to it. There was no way to calculate how much you used other than that. You know, if it was the 30-minute dive and you went to 60 feet and you used 1,000 PSI, you could do a little bit of math, but really, quite frankly, what did it matter? Because your next dive is going to be different. It could be at a different depth, a different currents, and everything else. So the idea of calculating and knowing your air consumption and, you, and using that to, to limit your dive, or at least to plan your dive, was pretty much a foreign concept. And then in about 1960, 1962, the very first decent, anyway, uh, commercially available submersible pressure gauges. One of the very first was uh, was developed by a, a friend of mine, Sam Lecoque, uh, founder owner of Sportsways Waterlung Sportsways Sportsways in California, and it was called the the Sea View gauge. And again, if you go back in some of my videos, you'll see the Sea View. But at least then we knew how much air we had in our tank. So now we could put our regulator onto the tank. You see, turn on the air. I look at the sea view gauge and it said 20 to 50. And then at any time through the dive, you could look at your pressure gauge and say, well, 1,500, 1,100, 1,000, 500, time to go up. So we were getting into the concept of calculating air consumption. If, if even it's just as basic as watching that you still had air left in your gauge, but that was a big advantage of an SPG. The SPG allows you to see how much air you have. And that was a big step forward. Prior to that, the only thing we had in terms of safety was the J-valve. The J-valve was critical. This is an actual J-valve, okay? So this is a tank valve. When you look at a tank valve today, you see this. Just the valve. This is the place where the regulator goes. You see, you recognize that. And you on off. That's it. That's all you see. It's called a K. There's a long story to that, too, which is in my videos. But anyway, if you, if you have this extra extension on this side, this becomes a J valve. This section over here, this lever over here, it's a constant, sometimes called a spring-loaded, constant spring-loaded reserve, air reserve. And at the beginning of the dive, this was up, and you would breathe and breathe and breathe and breathe and breathe. When the pressure got down to about 300 psi, it got hard to breathe. Huh? I'm out of there. Time to end my dive. We weren't stupid, you know. We were just had very very crude equipment. So you would reach back and there's a rod on the left side of your tank, which was very appropriately called, you ready? The J rod. <laughs> you would pull that down and that pulled this down and now you, <laughs> lots of air. Well, 300 PSI. 
so if you weren't too deep, not too far from the surface, not too far from your boat, you could easily and safely swim back to the boat. You had enough air. Okay, that was this was so important that when I took diving, our instructor said to us, "You must always have a J valve on your gear setup. You must always have a J valve." Without it, you're basically suicidal. And to a certain extent, he was right, because if you didn't have this, when you ran out, you're out. Whether you were 10 feet down or 100 feet down, inside a shipwreck or not. So important that many regulator manufacturers, here's an example. This actually is made by Waterlung by Sam Lacoste Company, sports waste. Regulators, this is the first stage of a regulator, see? But look on the side, guess what there is? There's a J valve on the side. Uh, many, many regulators had a J valve on them. So if you were using a tank that didn't have a J valve, if you were traveling or something, then you had a J valve built in. You see, you could buy this. And buy. Other regulators had similar interesting devices to warn you when you got low over there. was a sonic regulator, a couple in fact, but the most famous, best known perhaps was the Healthway sonic regulator. When you uh, breathe in, you got, there's a hammer that, that inside the regulator that wrapped uh, on the regulator made a rattle. U.S. divers had a sonic valve. So when you got down to 500 PSI, when you sucked in, it wrapped to let you know you were low on air, time to go up. So there were lots of devices like that, but not until the SPG came along did we actually get concerned with air consumption. And then it became a big deal. And today is very, very important. It's a large part of scuba training, air consumption. Divers are trained from the very first time they put on a scuba unit to watch their pressure gauge throughout their training. In fact, one of the st steps that a current instructor uh, does with a new diver is he will stop the new diver at any time during one of his dives, pool or open water, and ask him what his pressure is. And the student is supposed to know what the pressure in is within a few hundred PSI because, of course, he's watching all the time, so he has a good idea. Without looking, he's supposed to say, uh, I think I got 600 left, you see? And you should have a good idea. Air consumption is very important. And then using air consumption, you use that to time your dive, how much you use to get down, explore the wreck, to get back, and how much you need to get back up with a safety reserve. All very important. What about computers? I mentioned earlier about air integrated computers. Okay, the air integrated computer makes all of this redundant. You don't need any of this stuff, none of it. Because the air integrated computer, the most modern air integrated computer, actually calculates your air consumption. It can actually measure the pressure drop every time you breathe, and it knows how long the air supply you have left in your tank is going to last. So on an air integrated computer screen, you'll see a number. It might say 20 minutes. What that means is you have 20 minutes of air, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 30 seconds, whatever it happens to be. The computer actually measures the amount of air that you're using, knowing how much is left in the tank, and gives you a number. Now that makes scuba diving so simple. No calculations, no deciding what to do or anything else. You know you have 20 minutes remaining, and it's, it's, it really is so much easier and safer today. Some divers have talked about redundant air supplies. Well, way back in the very beginning, there weren't redundant air supplies. We dove with a tank, one tank, that's it. When the tank was empty, you came up. I did have, many, many years ago, this setup. Now, I have to be honest with you. I built this more because I thought it would be pretty <laughs> than because I needed it. As you can see, I have a 72 cubic foot tank, chrome plated. And then beside that 72 cubic, I have a pony bottle. This pony bottle was made from a fire extinguisher, yeah, 1800 PSI fire extinguisher fitted with a valve and a separate regulator on it. This is almost, in fact, it is, quite frankly, a, a pony system as you would buy today. This was 1977 I made this. Number one, it was really cool. All chrome plated, beautiful big black and chrome two hose regulator on the main tank and a beautiful chrome U.S. divers uh, hydronaut, I think, on this one. It was a really cool system, but it gave me a redundant air supply, which I suppose is related to, uh, to air consumption. Redundant air supplies like this are very common these days. But once again, if I may, I know some of you guys are a bit adverse to computers. You want to stick with your good old J valve or SPG. An air integrated computer is just fantastic. It precludes the use of all of these things that tells you how much air you have left, how long it's going to last, and basically it says, time to go to the surface, stupid. Referring to the diver. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. A couple of tips. You're asking how did, we, how did we calculate air consumption in the old days? Well, we didn't. We couldn't. Didn't have pressure gauges, and quite frankly, didn't worry about it. We had a tank, we had a J valve. Hey, we're frogmen having a good time. That was the end of story. Anyway, there's some thoughts for you if you have some comments on that. Maybe some of you old guys 
Uh, I'm just telling you my experiences here. Maybe some of you old guys had different ideas on that. Share them with me. Talk to you real soon. Alec Pierce Scuba, Vintage Scuba.